Welcome, my name is Rich. This is a let's play of Champions Online, a superhero MMO based on the Champions pen and paper RPG. The character I'm playing as is Technical Issues, an electricity powered superhero who is dressed like this rather than uh, like this, for example, because we recently. Hey, well, welcome, Raven Force. We recently, well, fairly recently, travelled back in time to avert the apocalypse, and it felt appropriate, uh, having done so, to dress as though he, we had just escaped a post-apocalyptic um, wasteland, uh, which it kind of was. Uh, we only saw a bit of it, um, the apocalypse in Vibora Bay. Uh, the sky was ap appropriately apocalyptic. Um, but we didn't really get to see very much of the rest of the world in that state, which, fair enough, it probably would have been a bit of a, a, bit of a pain to um, rework all the uh, open world areas to look like apocalyptic ruins. Um, as far as I can tell, we've done basically all of the main story of the game. So... Uh, we're moving on to adventure packs. What's the he got for us? Ah, okay. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where to pick up the one that I want to do first, which is um, Whiteout. But I will find it. Can no, I probably not her. Still? Hey, Liffy. Speak to Defender. Oh, okay. That's handy. There we go. There's trouble brewing in Canada, and Justicia has requested some backup. Steelhead is having communication problems and they think the local Argent base is, in the, is the cause. They've got a nasty storm rolling in and, so, and a loss of communication is dangerous to everyone in the base and the surrounding area. Time is of the essence, technical issues. Justicia could use your help if you're willing to lend a hand. The jet is standing by if you're ready. Yep. Um... Yes, I have. Uh, so I must have just gotten done explaining about the change in costume when you arrived, but um, a little while ago we came back in time after failing to stop an apocalypse, um, and I decided that since we had just come, in, come back in time af from after an apocalypse to avert that apocalypse, uh, an appro uh, a costume like this would be most appropriate. Uh, right, Snow Crash. Now, Ravenforce told me a while ago that they'd played uh, Whiteout once solo and won't do it anymore because the music is too creepy and the overall atmosphere is too scary. So I will turn up the music, hopefully not so much that it drowns me out, but so that we can hear it because I have played... White out solo once or twice, but never with the music on. Oops, hello. So the Ronesh love to ambush you constantly. Yeah, uh, I'm not too worried about the Ronesh ambushing me because I have a non-targeted AOE that I can use to find them. <clears throat> the 
situation. We've been having some problems with our communications in the past few days. Our technicians can't find any good reasons on our, en on our end why we should be hearing static on our radios, or why we can't seem to get a clear signal in or out of the area sometimes. The answer might lie with Argent. We've witnessed them erecting some odd-looking antenna along their perimeter. We suspect this may be the source of our communication troubles. I'd appreciate your help in checking out those structures. And if you should happen to run into any Argent personnel, I'd also appreciate it if you remind them gently that we'd rather not have our signals jammed. Understood. What's he got to tell? No, no, not, not him. Douglas Mackenzie. Communications have been going up and down like a yo-yo. If this keeps up, we're going to have a much bigger problem than a little inconvenience. Uh, yes, I've read his info before. Where are the trainers? We've told the support personnel to get inside while we figure out what's going on. You'll notice the powerhouse connection has been temporarily shut down as well. Until we get we know more, we don't feel safe sending people through from here. Fair enough. I mean, it is a... It's basically a dimensional rift, isn't it? Well, yeah, the music is pretty tense, but this is the same music that you have over the rest of the game, I think. It's not unique to, uh, to Whiteout. You can see an area that we'll get to later that's different from the main um, North Canada map. Uh, but right now we examine Argent Communications Array and Array Alpha. Yeah, you can imagine that turned up high it being the first time you've ever run it. <laughs> I ran it at night too, so that was my fault. I'm better with that kind of stuff now, but back then I was like, oh my god! Well, fair enough. Hi guys, what's going on over here? Oops, no, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to <laughs> set him on fire with a torch. Would you stop tasering me, please? Don't tell my boss. I wonder why he... Because that doesn't usually happen. No member of Argent will cry uncle. All right, bravo. I wonder whether I can mount my jet bike. In. Yes, I can. Splendid. That'll make things easier. say about tasering me. It just annoys me. I'm not quite sure what exactly I'm doing. It doesn't seem as though there's much to interact with here. Like, am I just shutting it down? I mean, that makes sense, but am I not, like, trying to find out what the purpose of this array is, or what it's broadcasting? to play the What Lies Beneath mission in STO. Uh, I don't... I haven't played STO. I'm not sure what it's about and whether it would be interesting to me. I mean, I guess I can look, see what it's, what it's like. I do like Star Trek in general. I mean, it was just a matter of time before Steelhead sent someone. I was just trying to boost the signal. Oh yes, I think what the case is is that... Ooh, Argent Pistol. Nice. Oh no, it's... Hmm, hold on. The little domino mask at the top right-hand corner indicates that this is a... a costume piece. But... 
Yes, Del Taras. Uh, CEO does have a story. Uh, it's it's not as uh, structured as some um, MMOs in terms of story. Uh, in fact, it's not terribly well. Like, there's no overarching um, story, like plot. Yes, it gives a costume. So, does it actually give a costume, or is it a device? Okay. I mean, I don't have a space. Okay. Now I've got it equipped in my into device. I think it has the costume tag accidentally. Ah, right. Okay. That's what it was. Uh, so, CO doesn't really have a very strong story. It's very episodic. Uh, there's no overarching um, plot through the whole thing. Uh, you see people turn up occasionally, like Shadow Destroyer. Um, they put a few things in much later on in the story, in the like progression of zones. So like in, um, hey Kala, welcome. No, it unlocked a costume. It's a pistol variant you can use if you have pistol powers. Oh, cool. Okay, well, I have made the domino mask grey out, so whether it's a device or whether it's a costume piece or whether it's both uh, hopefully it will now be applying al allow me to use the costume piece if it in indeed gives a costume piece um, so later on in zones like uh, Monster Island and Lemuria there are, you, you come across um suggestions of plot that you'll find out uh, that you'll find later so you'll find cockaradons and portals to another world assistance to anyone who might need it. I'll see if I can't find you some additional backup. Yes, sir. Come in! Do you copy? Come in! Ah, so the pistol is... Uh, very, very old from when um, from an era of power replacement gear. Uh, Whiteout, Whiteout has a lot of stuff like that. Okay, fair enough. Um, so you do occasionally find things in later zones that that build a framework but build a <coughs> information for the viewer uh, that things out there exist. But there you don't, when you're a first level character, get introduced to the concept of Shadow Destroyer and the Carcaradons and an alternate universe where um, everyone's evil instead of good. No, that bush, not, bush isn't an, a Ronesh. That's good. Um, so stuff does turn up uh, but story's not really Champions Online's um, strong suit. Uh, the customizability of the, the the characters is really the the strong point of Champions Online. Although to be fair, uh, these adventure packs like this one are quite good for story. They've got a lot more. They've got a lot of voice acting, which kind of fell away as you go through normal content in the game. They appeared from the snow. They took us all by surprise. Some of my teammates may have survived. Please look for them. Okay. Uh, soldier who doesn't like me very much because...
they're a targetable enemy and now they're disappearing so um, whiteout is pretty much a reference to um, Teleoraptor? Well, it's not unusual that you find a Teleoraptor in uh, North Canada. This is even the right sort of Teleoraptor um, for the zone. It's got cybernetics in it. Although I did wonder when we encountered them the first time here in the frozen north why there were reptiles running around <clears throat> and fine. Um, but I did wonder uh, also whether the cybernetics they've got implanted are helping them with um, body heat. This trooper appears to have been mauled by something particularly savage. There is, however, a sm faint smell of burning flesh. Closer examination reveals marks from some sort of energy weapon, which, again, wouldn't... Oh, no, hold on. So, Teleoraptors in Monster Island can fire beams of radioactive breath, but the ones here can't. Uh, the other, <clears throat> the other tells like um, being mauled by a, a savage beast, uh, could be. Um, it could be Teleoraptors that are responsible, but. Probably isn't. So uh, did I get? Uh, did I get done saying that Whiteout is basically a reference to The Thing by John Carpenter? I think I. Maybe I mentioned that. Maybe I didn't quite get that far. Uh, there's a bunch of references to John Carpenter's works in the game. Um, mostly they come earlier during uh, <clears throat> stuff that you do in Millennium City. But there is this as well. Um, and so, yes, generally speaking, the story is not so strong in general Champions Online play. The adventure packs that we're playing here are quite good. They've got voice acting, which tends to drop off a bit in as you go through content, and um, sort of the animations that you saw, that's unique to adventure packs, I think. This trooper lies dead in the snow, frost already forming on his his skin. That's a female... Well, okay, maybe they're trans. And your character is capable of telling that they're trans. <coughs> his neck is twisted at an odd angle, an expression of surprise on his face. So it, it's possible that the, that trooper is trans and your character is capable of telling that, but it's more likely that the game's developers made a mistake there. Here is a Ronesh. Crashed saucer. This is a little bit Geiger-esque, isn't it? It's a little bit like Alien, but the rest of the design is not particularly. In fact, the saucer and the green glow might be similar to um, Independence Day. What am I supposed to be doing? Search the second sight, third sight, and fourth sight. Did I not search those sites? Might be a bug where the game is using a random model. Yeah, <clears throat> could be. But then why include a female model if all of your text is um, for male? Didn't I examine the body? I thought I did. Okay, I wonder why it's not ticking off the boxes properly. Um... Ah, oh, here we are. The game has some randomization to it. And 
sometimes things that should use a specific model are a bit random. Model Character models aren't unique to Whiteout. Well, yes, I know that. But why, if you include female character models, uh, would you not write the text boxes uh, with that in mind, so that you it could be either gender? The burn marks from an energy weapon are particularly obvious here. It doesn't quite look like something the locals use. So apparently I need to examine the body twice for it to count. There we go. Where's the final one then? I've done this one. Oh, here we are. It appears there might be survivors after all. Go back and talk to someone. Maybe the code got broken over time. Yeah, maybe. You, you're back. I didn't expect you for you to return. So soon, I mean. You found the bodies of my teammates, but some of the others might have been taken. Hmm, yes. Maybe they took hostages. We should go to the crash site. If the others have been taken, I imagine they'd be taken there. Yes, we should go at once. I fear I'm too in injured to assist you. I'll wait here in case Justitia sends another team. Hmm. I wonder what could be going on. only interact with these in the correct order. Look out! Aliens! Ah, now we actually see the Ronesh. I don't think they like electricity any more than anybody else does. Even more. Hello. Could you stop being disgusting, please? Ugh, come on. are there? And why don't they all just attack at once? I mean, it wouldn't do them any good. I'm a bit too tough for that, but... Oh, survive assault groups three of five. Oh, okay. Surprised they don't have anything more complex than... Poison weapons and edged weapons. Hmm. Possible fossil. What are those? Uh, it's just a slotted um, mod. But this is a. Uh, I wonder if this is worth, whether this is worth much in the auction house. <clears throat> how exactly does my character know how to deactivate these force fields? These are aliens who we've never met before.
We were headed for the crash site when these teleosaurs attack rushed us. It was weird enough to find those in this neck of the woods, but they were accompanied by bears and what might have been ice demons. We scattered to find cover, but in the confusion they got some of us. I was knocked out and found myself in this cage in the middle of the crash site. The aliens all sort of melted into the snow. You know the rest. Say, are you, you okay? You look like you've seen something strange. Extra dimensional knowledge. Well, it could be extra dimensional knowledge. Clicking the complete issue button will move players to the next map in the issue automatically. Do not click on this option until your team is sure they are ready to leave this map. I'm sure. Oh yes, I did decide, didn't I, that technical issues is actually... Uh, the physical avatar of an extra universal curious being who uh, instead of having a brain has a sort of dimensional antenna so I suppose um, the in-universe explanation for why she's capable of doing all of these things like synthesizing antidotes and hacking and uh, deactivating advanced alien devices is that Thanks for coming to get us. We weren't sure how long we were going to survive with those creatures. We need to head back to Steelhead and rally a larger... Who's that? Another survivor? Hello? He... He looks like me. Imposter! Shoot him! What? No! I'm real! Yeah, that's just what an alien would say. I've been stuck in this cage with you the whole time. I can't be an alien. Yes. Also, I can tell because I can target him and I can't target these guys. <laughs> or, well, his, his health bars are red and these guys are in green. Um, what the fuck was I saying before? Oh, yes. So maybe Technical Issues is capable of doing these things because she's actually controlled by an extra dimensional being but um, it doesn't explain how other player characters are capable of doing these things we're getting strange reports from all over the area Taleo clones running with wolves bears and supernatural elements have you contact with our teams I see I'm glad to hear that you were able to save Blair's team but this makes me believe there's a there is a great bull not brewing We've lost contact with Ice Station Alpaca. Storm is hearing with Asians sent Enzi there to itch for I'll help him. Good luck. Sorry, I wasn't able to add the hiss and crackle of a radio signal that was being interrupted. <clears throat> oh, hey. I closed that without reading it. The blizzard is rolling in earnestly now. You aren't sure how much longer you can continue to travel in this weather. Thankfully, Ice Station Alpaca is a short distance away. Do you ever actually interact with Ice Station or for Ice Station Alpaca outside of Whiteout? The personnel of Ice Station Alpaca have braced themselves for the storm. Aware of the alien menace and the inclement, inclement weather headed their way, Lieutenant Douglas McKenzie arrived with only a few reinforcements to secure the perimeter and try to sort out who might not be who they, are, they say they are. With communications down, the Ice Station is cut off from the outside world. <clears throat> Pretty sure when this is the open world map of Canadian North. There isn't a force, uh, an ice station here. Uh, they must have built it between last time I was here and now. Except when you actually get inside these structures, they're enormous, which means they must, must have been dug out of the earth. 
I suppose in a, a universe like this where they've got people with superpowers, it's probably not that difficult to do construction work, but... Look at the map, triangulate your location in Canada. Alpaca isn't part of the regular map and occupies a Hunter Patriot base. I thought so. I mean, I knew that coming along here would lead you to... I think this is a Hunter Patriot base, which would mean... Yeah, these areas would probably would be as well. I wonder whether that's still here. Whether I can get to it on this map. Although if this is, this is supposed to be happening after you've done everything in Canada, um, maybe we can assume that this is in the future and as such the Hunter Patriot base is de deconstructed. Like Maybe this is this area is what this this appearance is what this area is supposed to look like at that point. I've even got a helicopter in here. That's a reference to stuff in the thing. Communications have been going up and down like a yo-yo. If this keeps up, we're going to have a major, much bigger problem than a little inconvenience. Steelhead Division Lieutenant and brother to R RMCP Steelhead Lieutenant Robert McKenzie. Independently wealthy after suing the Helsinger Beverage Company upon finding a mouse in a bottle of his favourite drink. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've met him before, haven't we? It's a weird thing to completely replace that, but yeah, it's just different. You never see any sign of the existence of Hunter Patriots in Whiteout. Hmm. I mean, during the events that you do in the regular... Canadian North, you do take out the Hunter Patriot leader um, when he gets lured into the area to help support them because of the the damage you've done to the organisation. So maybe, maybe this is the future and the Hunter Patriots don't exist anymore. <clears throat> or they've moved on. We best get moving, technical issues. There's a heavy storm coming in and we've got a lot of to sort out before we're done. Justicia sent me out here since I know these folks. He figures that between you and me, we can uncover who any masquerading aliens are. I'd like you to help me in interview some of the people here. The researchers and infirmary team is a good place to start. Dr. Peter Bennings is the base doctor. He's seen just about every type of injury you can, you can get out here. He used to work in Steelhead, but has was promoted out here as the senior doc. Dr. Steele is a geologist who's been conducting surveys for Questionite in the area. I haven't worked with him directly, but he's always been a friendly guy. The kind of guy who'd give you the shirt off his back in a blizzard. Hopefully it won't come to that during the storm. Dr. Keith Childs is a real smart guy. Quiet too. He's been around since the Gadroon first started trying to terraform the place. He his special field is xenobiology, but that might not be might come so that might come in handy, provided of course he's not been replaced by an alien. Dr. Jane Clark is the other team other team xenobiologist. She's usually the one who handles the sled dogs out here and was and has a way with critters of all kinds, even aliens. It I just hope this group hasn't taken advantage of her trying to be friendly. Dr. Diana Norman is a xenobotanist who came here, came out here after a tour on, on Monster Island, studying the plant life there. She's had a rough time adjusting to our, our colder weather. Yeah, Monster Island is basically a tropical island. Um, she's not the most friendly person in the world, but she's a darn good scientist. Dr. Samantha Cartier is the physicist they... Huh, that's probably a reference to Sam Carter of uh, Stargate. The physicist they brought out to try and examine some of the Gadroon technology in the wild, as it were. She's done a lot of work with heroes like yourself before, but watch out. The woman is a card shark. <laughs> I don't know whether in Stargate Sam Carter was good at cards or not. It's been a while since I've watched the show. Uh, where am I supposed to go now? Interview researchers in building one. Right, okay, that's building four. Two, three, one. Here we are. It's handy that they're numbered on the outside. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's hard to be sure what order things happen. If this happens after the main story, then it could be that the Hunter Patriot organization is now defunct, which kind of makes sense now that I think about it. These stories are basically DLC added to the game after the main story was written. In the main game, they can't really re remove um, Hunter Patriots without f adding phases to the world, which they don't seem to have been able to when the game was made. And with only one developer working on the game now, um, they probably aren't really capable of um, doing that kind of work. Okay. These haven't started being replaced by Ronesh yet. It appears. Um, I suppose it... So this tubular tunnel follows the shape of um, the external building and then I guess this is the square section and then as you go further down further in you go down uh, which goes underground but still I mean you still have to have had this whole area excavated on the other hand this is a universe with people who have the superpower to control Earth, so I suppose it's probably entirely possible, uh, entirely feasible that you could just hire a construction crew to excavate this in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, the uh, music in in here is much more atmospheric, isn't it? Binnings, Diana Norman, Frank Steele. the original game, but Demon Flame, Serpent Mountain and Resistance were the main ones. It's not that creepy. I've played creepier games. Oh wow, technical issues. You're doing okay in here so far. I was able to check in with Mackenzie just before the blizzard rolled in and cut us off, but he said he was sending help. Aliens, it's crazy. Are we done here? First I was it was something playing havoc with communications, then it was the storm, now it's aliens and nosy tights. I have a... I'm not in tights. I don't think Technical Issues has ever worn superhero, classic superhero tights. I have a lot of important work I need to be doing. I'd like to get back to my lab and finish. If you could hurry that along, that'd be great. Steel. Was he the really friendly guy? Steel's a geologist. Keith Childs. Oh, they're not in this list. Jean Clark. Samantha Cartier. Diana Norman is a xenobiologist who came out here for a tour on after a tour on Monster Island. She's not the most friendly person in the world, but she's not a good scientist. So that fits with her. What do you want? I have a lot of work to finish. I'm not an alien. I'm just a regular guy who studies geology. I just want to get out of here and do my work quietly. So the geologist... Who is the geologist? Frank Steele. Friendly guy. Kind of guy who would who'd give you the shirt off his back in a blizzard. So he's an alien. I don't know whether he's an alien though. Pete Bennings. Because he's 
He's supposed to have seen just about every type of injury you can get out here, but I guess that doesn't mean he'd be that familiar with aliens. The plot element of the other APs gets reused, but this one was forgotten. So, Clark, Samantha Cartier, who is... Oh no, she's got a ponytail. Sam Carter in Stargate keeps her hair short, so... What if the aliens are refugees? What if they're just as afraid as we are? Would you please check on the dogs? I'm afraid they've been forgotten in the chaos of the blizzard and the aliens. Oh, what if the aliens hurt them? What if they hurt the aliens? That'd be awful. Jane Clark. That probably sounds like her, doesn't it? Uh, handles the sled dogs and is has a way with critters of all kinds, even aliens. Yeah, that scans. Keith Childs. If you happen to take down an alien and it is relatively intact, would you mind bringing it back for us to study? We've been studying the Gudrun, but compar comparative xenobiology would be absolutely en enlightening. On a less academic note, Cartier has been watching me this whole time. It's creepy and suspicious. Between you and me, I take her in for questioning. Keith Childs. Real smart guy, quiet too. He's been around, his specialty is xenobiology. Mm, I don't know, is he a bit too talkative for a quiet person? Do you suppose? Childs has been very twitchy. I hope no one else has been taken and replaced, but I'd watch out for him. Should I be suspicious that any of them know that they could be replaced? Physicist I've brought in to try and examine some of the Gadroon technology in the wild. Done a lot of work with heroes like yourself, but watch out, the woman is a card shark. Has anyone played this recently? Do you know who the correct uh, choices are for aliens. I'm pretty sure that Frank Steele is one because of his reaction earlier. But I don't know which, if any, well, it's probably either Keith Childs or Sam Cartier. Jane Clark sounds like the real person. Once again, I'm going to have to apologise. Uh, I'm using, I'm looking at chat on my tablet because I don't have it open on main screen. Uh, I don't have a second screen for my computer, so um, sometimes the tablet just decides it's not going to be connected to the Wi-Fi, and therefore I can't see chat when that happens. Uh, so it's not that I'm ignoring anybody, it's just that I can't see your messages. Oh, Radio Mackenzie. Briefing researchers. We best get moving technical issues. There's a heavy storm coming in and we've just got and we've got a lot of a lot to sort out before we're done. Just this year sent me out here oh yeah, we've already read that, haven't we? Right, yes. And then, who's your suspect? Oh right, you can't actually... Oh, maybe you can, after you choose one of these. I hate to think that any of our people might have been taken by these aliens, but it seems to be the, seems to be the case. Team leader, I'll let you tell me who you suspect. We'll put them under guard until we can sort everything out. This option must be selected by the team leader. Steel. Understood, team leader. Uh, we'll keep an eye on Dr. Steele. The guy, my guys will lead those folks to building four while you head to building two. Okay, so you can't actually... I thought maybe you'd have a choice of three and then a second choice of three, but it seems... I'm not sure how much it really matters. Maybe you get an accolade if you get them right, but I don't think there's anything to it other than that, maybe. I think it depends... I think it affects how many people get hurt when they try and escape. Um... Mackenzie's guards will be along to escort this group 
keeping your suspect under guard. Building 2 is the next target. Hopefully as many survivors will be found there. Why? Oh right, okay, I have to move closer to the door before I can... before I'm allowed to leave through it. You can get a lot of Ronesh costume parts, but I don't know... Is the, um... The skin type under their armor, is that, um... Alien muscle? It might be. Oh, hello. Oh yeah, I haven't been reading info. An alien of unknown origin. Oh, it wouldn't have told me much anyway, would it? Are most of these? Yeah, I think they must be mostly complete, uh, mostly unique um, attack types. You, you don't get the option of, well, certainly not the animations um, with uh, attacks available to players. Hello. I wonder whether the inside of this will curve the correct direction. Or whether it will curve the other way. Oh, I can't use travel powers now because of the intense blizzard. That makes sense. So what's the face ask me to check on the dogs? Which, if this were, um... Uh, the thing, I would not do, because the dogs are the first ones that... Well, they're basically where the in infection comes from. Or the replacement. I mean, if you've seen the thing, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, it's a little bit difficult to explain. So the game that I'm thinking of that um, I've played before that's scarier than, well, that was scarier to me than this is a game called Hellgate London, which is even older than this game, I think. Uh, it didn't do very well because uh, it was kind of an MMO. It was a first-person shooter or third-person, it depended on what class you picked. Um, playing it first-person, it was extremely atmospheric and quite scary because um, demons in the game had a tendency to spawn very suddenly through portals at you. Um, playing third person over the shoulder as a, a melee character wasn't quite so scary. Oh, well that's disappointing. The uh, corridor curves the wrong way. Lights of building two flicker uncertainly, accompanied by the steady drip of liquid and the intermittent snap of electricity. The body of a researcher lies on the ground. This researcher looks as though he was attempting to flee before being cut down from behind. That's an uh, unpleasant way to go. Deceased scientist. And yet his health bar is full. So he's a fully healthy corpse, I suppose? Oh, dripping green. That's ominous. Well, none of you are Ronesh. I suppose that's fine. Do I have to check my Wi-Fi again? Why does it keep disconnecting? <laughs> I 
healthy corpse. Yeah. He's perfectly stable. He's dead. Well, yes, he can't get any worse. In a biology lab. These are Gadroon plants, I think. Examine body. Body of this researcher lies at an unnatural angle. As opposed to a natural angle. The name tag reads Dr. Shepard. He appears to have been gutted. no ID on this body. The head trauma is severe, but dental records will likely be able to sort out who he were, who this was. It's pretty grim, isn't it? I didn't remember how grim it was. Oh, this guy looks identical to the previous one. This scientist might have been the victim of friendly fire. Before or after the aliens attacked, it's hard to say. Why would he be the victim of friendly fire before the aliens attacked? Was he an enormous asshole? Is he in a botany lab? How is this necessarily a xenobotany lab? I mean, sure, there are alien plants in it. But there are fewer alien plants in this one than in the previous room. Healthy Corpse sounds like a strange Scar album. Yeah, maybe. This unfortunate person was apparently dragged down by many clawed appendages. It's a bad way to go, isn't it? Energy weapons mark Energy, we energy weapon marks make up the defensive wounds on this body. So he was shot by energy weapons. The late Dr. Stevens seemed to have been trying to call get cell service, probably to call for help. This victim stares in horror into the distance. In fact, it almost appears to be staring at something behind your shoulder. Yeah, unfortunately, the way that um, enemies spawn in in this game means that it's very difficult to have that kind of uh, jump scare. I mean, it, it's kind of clunky. You would notice if something appeared that could be a threat to you. Oh, this guy's had a, a really bad day, hasn't he? Glowing eyes in the dark. So many glowing eyes. Watching. Always watching. Get me out of here, please. You have to get me out of here. I mean, sure. Okay. Ah, oh, the infirmary. That makes sense. Hold on a minute. These are CAT scan machines in a room lined with metal. That's incredibly stupid. The teeth! <laughs> okay. Oh, hello. Did you have an appointment for electrotherapy? Electrotherapy, by the way, is horrible. Um, it was the th one of the things that they moved on to after... Um, <clears throat> uh, ...lobotomy to try and cure people of mental illnesses. Um, and basically it involves exactly what you'd expect, shocking people with um, different charges of, or different voltages of electric shocks. 
Um, it did... Well, it wasn't as quite as harmful and horrible as lobotomy, but it certainly didn't do anybody any good. Who's your suspect? I hate to think that any of our people might have been taken by these aliens, but it seems to be the case. Team leader, I need you to tell me who you suspect. We'll put them under guard until we can sort everything out. So it's either talking about glowing eyes in the dark or the teeth you like white out now but you still wouldn't solo it well fair enough which was which who, who was oh yeah, yeah okay so he Beckett was talking about glowing eyes in the dark and Shepard was talking about teeth I've no idea which one it could be they don't give me enough. Does anyone remember which one turns out to be the alien? Shepard. Okay, cool. Um, I'll try him. The Ronesh really aren't pushovers unless you're OP. Well, fair enough. I guess I'm OP then? I hadn't really thought about it. Or well, I hadn't really considered that this build would be OP. I mean, I'm difficult to hurt, and I do seem to be doing reasonable damage, but uh, I wouldn't have pegged my character as being particularly OP. Anyway, copy that, team leader. We'll take an eye, we'll keep an eye on Shepard. My guys will lead those folks to building four while you head to building three. Understood. In a few moments, Lieutenant Mackenzie's men will be here to escort the two survivors back to Building 4. Hopefully there will be more survivors in your next target building. In your next target, Building 3. Yes. I can actually fly in here, so let's do that. Get me out more quickly. Uh, horrific in mobs. Well, fair enough. Technical issues is well built. Solid mechanics. I'd probably make use of her active defense more, but you never seem to have an issue. No. It's either I don't need it, or it happens. damage happens too much too quickly for me to think about using an active defense, I guess. I mean, the only time it was really an issue recently that I can remember was Valerian Scarlet um, on Wednesday, and she was just doing too much damage for me to manage on my own, or even with the help of Captain Something, who might be watching, but I can't remember the name of, unfortunately. Very sorry. Nothing stirs. The only sound in Building 3 is the muted howl of the blizzard outside. Oh wait, is this building curving correctly? I think it probably is. Leave Building 3. Oh, must finish search for survivors. Okay, let's see whether I can remember to check next time whether the uh, curve in the corridor is going in the correct direction. Oh yes, I should probably start checking for monsters. Well, nothing's tight. Oh, that'll be a monster, won't it? And so will this. They're a little bit conspicuous, aren't they? Oh, okay, so it won't attack me next uh, yet. It'll attack me when I come out, I expect, or when I start interacting with the door, maybe. The thing is, is that it's too shiny. That's what's tipped me off. Check security station. Which one's the security station? We 
which is the thing. Oh, here we are. Okay. I wish interactable objects would start doing the shiny thing when you're further away so that you can tell. I think all the entry curve, entryways curve right and some of the build, above, bound, above ground buildings curve right. Yeah, the shiny crates mark where a Ronesh will spawn later, but the actual crate prop isn't an NPC. Ah, okay. This security console appears to have been accessed recently. The data in the open file regards the security measures in Steelhead. Ah, so the Ronesh want to break into Steelhead. Are you going to pop out at me? can't land on it. This has got to be making the uh, Ronesh feel quite undignified, hasn't it? <laughs> Maybe he's enjoying it. Step on me, powerful lady. Locker one looks like everyone just dropped what they were doing and walked out. won't spawn until I do a thing. Hmm. That's weird. Pulsing organic sound, like the beat of a large heart, comes from a far corner. Can you? You can also hear shuffling feet from the same direction. A survivor, an alien. Well, I can see a an interactions marker over there. Ooh, that's not a survivor. everywhere. You think you're safe and then suddenly they're everywhere around you. Have you seen the thing in the corner? Doomed! We're all doomed! Alright, now they start spawning. Biomass. Yeah, that's the appropriate response, I think. Set fire to container. It's a shame they couldn't animate it shriveling, isn't it? Crates are essentially small parts. effects into an NPC. Yeah, it's a new mechanic. I was supposed to have set this on fire and yet... Oh right, I suppose it was actually a crate and therefore being made of metal didn't especially care about... Um... Oh, that's a shame. It doesn't have to start hurting them until their crate and, um, object has disappeared. Hmm. So yes, a crate actually made of metal wouldn't care especially if it was set on fire, would it? Would it? After all. That thing's very loud, isn't it? Do quiet down, please. Scream more quietly. Suffer in silence. Two supplies in room one. 
All right, so there's only two supply rooms, isn't there? And one security room. Hmm. Oh, right. This attack was a little bit delayed, wasn't it? Why can I still hear that thing screaming? I don't think the Ronesh like lightning very much. Luckily, it seems nothing particularly likes lightning very much, doesn't it? It's quite handy, that. It's a shame I couldn't set the other um, crates on fire, even though they were even more obviously. Probably. All oh, right, guard building exit. That would require going to the building exit. Prevent waves of aliens from escaping building three. Three waves of aliens. Okay. Giger Bolt. It's a shame it's not more impressive to look at, really. I'd like it to be a bit more visually distinct from Arc, arc Lightning, or Lightning Arc rather, because Giger Bolt is supposed to be like. Well, it's not actually um, a finishing move in the Lightning set because. The, all of the when when the sets were released, they only had one um, ultimate move for all of the elemental powers, and they've added them added more since. But you have to unlock them, and I haven't unlocked the electricity one. I don't know how shapeshifting into like narrower forms is supposed to help. Given what you found, burning building three was probably the smart idea. The survivor you found, Lieutenant David, do you suspect him? Mm, I'm gonna say no. I mean, I. I don't know whether he's he should be suspicious, given he might have gotten lucky and survived, or it's entirely possible that he is, well, if he weren't an alien, why would he, or if he were an alien rather, why would he not have attacked me with, along with everything else? Why would he playing? A, why would he be playing a long game? I mean, I think the other Ronesh hid themselves in human form because they were sur surrounded by other humans. So I'm going to say no. I don't suspect him. Come on back to Building Four. I'll meet you inside. With the buildings cleared, it is time to head back to Building Four and rendezvous with Lieutenant Mackenzie. Okay, yeah, that curves left. This one curves right. Okay, well, at least they're correct more often than not. Uh, which one was four this way? I 
I assume that they had, like, the curved um, corridor piece. I don't know why they couldn't have just rotated it slightly so that it was pointing left instead of right for the one building, uh, building two, where it would actually have therefore met uh, or, you know, conformed with the outside appearance of the building. So apparently it curves around here and then there's a slope down under the earth, I guess. It doesn't quite match up with the topography of the outside of the building. Terribly well. I mean, it, it appears to be larger on the inside, slightly. Which actually kind of makes sense. We already know that uh, dimensional um, and pocket dimension um, technology exists. Our player character is capable of picking up and carrying objects without it appearing outwardly on her, outwardly on her person that are much larger even than herself. So perhaps the inside of each of these buildings is taking advantage of Sergeant Josh Pepper. Sergeant Pepper! <laughs> uh, he doesn't have any special info about liking music or anything. That's a shame. never made sense to me for him to be human but the reason is because he's in a room filled with Ronesh and sort of acts like they're not there. He, he doesn't react to them when they appear but then animation for characters is pretty poor. If they're supposed to be stationary like this then they won't react to anything that's happening around them and if they can move then you can accidentally nudge them or like they could wander around or which would even, which would probably seem stranger if he were wandering through a space full of Ronesh and they weren't reacting to him. Communications has been going up and down. All oh, right, yeah, we already said that. We have kept the folks you pointed out as security risks under guard. Now we can, well, shoot. We forgot about McReady. He's one of the more eccentric researchers here. Last we saw him, he was out by the motor pool. Find McCready. Okay. How does Mr. McCready feel about chickens, do you suppose? Wonder whether he might find them revolting. Tom McCready. Hey there! Stay back, alien scum! You're not getting me! Too? Huh. Guess you're clear. I've been working on an alien detector. And as you can see, it changes color when it detects these shapeshifters. See that cabin over there? I locked one of the aliens inside. He replaced my buddy Jim, but the detector outed him before I could be replaced too. Welcome, Digital Seahorse. This is a commander. I wonder how many commanders there are of the, of the right mighty Ronesh, which isn't spelled correctly. It's supposed to have a. Oh, hello. Interrupted me before I got my Geiger bolt off. It's supposed to have an apostrophe in it.
this doesn't have an apostrophe in it either. I've been saying it Rowan Esh, but it looks like it might be supposed to be Roin Esh. I was blocking that whole time. How did you knock me over? Ooh. Devil's boots. Steelhead flamethrower. Oh, that's um, not quite as cool. Flamethrowers used by the Steelhead science team. Why do they have flamethrowers? Don't ask. Has limited fuel remaining. 15 charges. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother. I think I'd do more damage with the electricity than with that. I mean, it's 248 fire damage every half second, and this does 504 electrical damage every half second. Turn to Lieutenant McKenzie. And I think at this point we discover that the aliens have attempted, or well, have not just attempted, they, they, they made the attempt and then were successful um, to escape and have run away. I think that in some of the dialogues you hear NPCs say Rowanesh. Okay. The rowing Esh. I wonder where they're rowing off to. Yeah, so these guys escaped. Oh, he was one. Alright, he left as well. That's a shame. I was wrong. Glowing eyes in the dark. So many glowing eyes. Watching. Always watching. Get me out of here, please. You have to get me out of here. Uh, I think we were largely correct. Other than the last guy. We were overpowered by the disguised aliens. They escaped and headed for Steelhead. I wonder whether it's possible if you co if you select all the correct people, whether it's possible for um, them to fail to escape, whether the guards are sufficient. Can't talk to him at all. Oh. Cutscene. Sierra Hotel One. This is Sierra Hotel Three. Lieutenant McKenzie, do you copy? Over. Copy that, Sierra Hotel Three. This is Sierra Hotel One. What do you have for me? Over. We found the track, sir. They're leading right back to Steelhead. Please advise. Over. Hold for now. I'm sending up some friends to help. Over. Just great. Copy that, actual. What's going on now? Over. As far as I know, the story assumes that there are more Ronesh, even if the people you investigate personally are identified correctly. Well, the people who you see over here waiting uh, are still there, I think. I mean, I didn't count them, but none of them were hurt, so I just assumed that... Um I just assumed that none of the people over here um, were Roanesh after all. I wonder why, I mean, sure, to make make room for enough people to sit at, but why would you have a huge long bar here? Completely empty shelves behind, and just one set of taps. 
and lots of cookers or cooking ranges but no well with only very little food storage space here and this is the only room in this building I mean maybe they build uh, bring lab coats. Maybe they bring frozen food supplies in from one of the other um, ice station alpaca buildings. That make, might make sense. No, this is an even smaller map than before. thing you'll notice outside is that some of the Ronesh are pretending to, pretending, pretending to be lumps of snow. They can take on appearance of inanimate objects and thus carried into the base by actual humans. Ah, uh, fair enough. Pretending to be snow? I always thought they burrowed underground. I suppose either is possible, but some of them use a spawn animation where they start as a liquid puddle. Hmm. So these are... Oh, these are Cyberlord, I think. Yeah, these look like Cyberlord stuff. It says... Unknown. Oh yeah, huh. <laughs> Info says Cyberlord. These robots are fabricated by in bulk by Cyberlord's carrier-based factory. As with much of Cyberlord's equipment, the original source of the te technology is somewhat murky. Actually, it's a specific variant of the tunnel travel power. You can get it in the Q store. You melt into a puddle and slither, slither around. Oh, cool. We're not really freeing them, they've just got their hands on their heads, but... They're no longer under robot guard, so I suppose that probably counts as freeing them. Why would Cyberlord be interested in Rowanesh technology? It appears to be mostly organic, or certainly with an organic element to it. I've got no idea whether this mission uses a nemesis. Uh, to be honest, I haven't... Um, ...built a nemesis yet. I haven't really been sure what sort of nemesis I want to use. is biotech to a degree, you, however Cyberlord is one of the many. However, Cyberlord is one of the many tech villains who covet alien technology. Understandable, yeah. Yes, this wish this mission will use NPCs if the PC is there. It, it has one. Okay. Interesting. A lot of dudes, isn't there? Could you bugger off, please. So 
maybe I should build a nemesis before the next um, adventure pack that I do. I don't really have any ideas for a good nemesis for technical issues. Maybe a tech hero? Oh, uh, well, not a hero, a tech villain. Can I destroy the teleporter? No. That would make things easier, wouldn't it? Stop them being able to drop pod in. Oh, only Whiteout makes use of a nemesis. I should have known before. Oh well. We haven't even fought uh, Cyberlord. I haven't done um, the mission that gets you to face him. I don't remember what it's called either. Am I supposed to just stay here? Or am I supposed to be doing stuff at other locations? Oh yeah, Fatal Error. That's the name of the uh, story arc where you fight Cyberlord. Uh, what's the name of the guy who actually turns out to be the one messing with Cyberlord? Who you only see right at the end of uh, Fatal Error? Does he ever show up again? I mean, I assume that he uh, exists in the game, uh, the RPG lore. But Cybermind, right, yes. Who calls Cyberlord Cyberlard because he's a 12 year old boy, apparently. North emitter, south emitter, south pylon, east pylon, so, all right, this is the final one. Cybermind. Oh, okay. I thought that the storyline ended with Cyberlord. I've done it a couple of times, but I've only ever gotten as far as defeating Cyberlord on his um, hover base. 
Justiciar, sir. The ship is nothing like the one that crashed. It's different. Cyborg Lord. Okay. They've opened fire! Get onto that ship and crush those gun batteries. I'm on my way. The final mission is to queue for the custom alert. Ah, okay, I see. I wonder what the ship that arrives looks like if it's not Cyberlord or whether it's a ship at all does it still have this like yellow and black technology if it's not Cyberlord oh this Guardian Enforcer really does not like being electrocuted does he teleport to code teleport to the base when you're creating a nemesis you don't get to choose like what kind of I guess base they use I mean you can you can choose a bunch of stuff like what they look like and what their personality is like what minions they have what power set they have but you I don't think you get to choose thematic stuff like whether they have a floating fortress or anything like this Yes, I will. Mechanically minded supervillain and personal nemesis of Justicia, created by Justicia's father to cybernetically enhance his son, Cyberlord was eventually defeated by his creation. Long in Long though thought to have been killed, Cyberlord has reappeared better, faster, and stronger than ever before. That's weird. Why would you need to create something like Cyberlord to uh, add cybernetics to your son? I did whiteout, no nemesis showed up. Handheld kinetic reflection device. Mm. Just as Shiar had a very nasty fall when climbing and his father constructed Cyberlord to help rebuild his son. Destructor as a generic nemesis. Ah, okay. I know that his uh, Justicia's history is that he had a skiing or climbing accident and he lost um, an arm and a leg to frostbite and crushing. I don't know why he's got something popping out of this arm as well. I don't. I didn't think that this arm was a cybernetic one but I guess it's actually just that's just how the um, the power set manifests on the player's body. But still, like, why would you need to invent something like Cyberlord to apply cybernetic enhancements to a child? Or to, well, anyone, really. I 
thank you for helping protect the crashed alien ship technical issues. Who knows what sort of evil cre creations Cyberlord could have made if he'd acquired that technology. Now we need to scuttle this ship. Let me know when you are ready to help with help set explosives. Make sure you have everything with you. Once you're done here, there won't be a ship to come back to. Okie dokie. Alright, that's the last card set. Hurry! Take the teleporter down! Wow, that's amazing. How exactly did they both manage to zip across the deck of that ship on their on one move? Oh, contracted, not created. How did I manage to misread that several times? I'm sure... Was I misreading it, or did it actually say created in the info box in this mission? I mean, I know I've got dyslexia, I didn't think that I would make quite such a bad mistake. Oh well. I can't thank you enough for helping with Cyberlord. <laughs> what is it, Blair? Sir, we've lost contact with Steelhead. I'm coming in with the transport. Where is everyone? You're inside, I hope. Let's form a perimeter and prepare for- Wait! Do you hear that? It's a trap! Aha! Uh -huh. These guys are slightly more difficult. They're tough. It would be more helpful to me if you didn't keep blowing them around. Justicia, stop blowing the Roan Ash, please. It's disrupting my battle. This happened a lot in City of Heroes because one of the power sets was energy uh, and basically every um, attack in the set was a knockback effect which wasn't a problem if you were playing energy because you were a ranged character and it wasn't that much of an issue for other ranged players but in City of Heroes you can also play a melee character and if your targets are being flung all over the map it does get a little bit annoying. <laughs> Alright, just as she was back there. Okay. Steelhead is a high security facility and some of the some and home to many dangerous projects and secrets. It's clear they've infiltrated the base. We need to neutralize them before they become a global threat. I'll stay outside with Blair and his team. You go inside and stop this alien incursion. I'm glad that you recognize I am that capable. And now you actually get to see what's inside the big weird force station steelhead building although is that not shorter than oh no that's the really tall one i don't even know what's supposed to be in here like it can't be like an office block or anything there's no windows oh well And then presumably we go down. Yeah, let's do 
to a head is kind of weird. I mean, it's a cool design. I, I think it looks cool. I just don't know what the function of the parts is supposed to be. I just say compression tech affects you when you go in there. Yeah, maybe. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? Technical issues. Oh, thank heavens. Yes, you have technical issues on the phone. No, no, I'm a person, not tech... N uh, never mind. The aliens have overridden the contro controls on the internal security system. We're safe in this lab, but we're also trapped. We can't turn the security field off from here, and even if we could, the, tur the turrets would shoot us. Their AI has been changed. If you can reset the security systems, we can get you, give you the codes to get further into the base. What's wrong, Ronesh? You seem shocked to meet me. It always amuses me that the um, engagement distance in the game is so short. I mean, I know that if you were standing here and enemies over here saw you and started attacking you, it would be really annoying, but... I think the towers are sci-fi equipment, not buildings. Hmm, makes sense. Like, realistically, enemies over here should be able to see you and identify you and start attacking. Um, it makes sense in a game that they would only attack when you get closer, um, but it still in universe amuses me that you could be standing here and be like, "Hold on, guys, I, I need to um, see to this call on the on the console. You're right, waiting there. Okay." doing very much damage to me, is it? I wonder what these crates might be. Oh ho! I am so surprised! What a shock! Are you waiting for your friend for, for me to come back the other way, are you? you usually try to sneak past them since you can hack them later. Turrets. Yeah, I guess. I can't really sneak past them because. Oh, I suppose I could f just fly past and ignore them. But using um, ball lightning would. They'd still target the turrets because they're autonomous balls of lightning. With such a splashy um, AOE heavy set like electricity, it's a bit difficult to be uh, precise about where you're attacking. What info do we have now? An alien of unknown origin, okay. I wonder if that's ever going to change. How often do you actually fight the Ronesh? they show up later in like alerts or cosmics or anything or is it actually just in this map that they show up or in um, this adventure pack just white out oh, okay It's a bit of a shame that the this is the only time that you see the um, assets that they put together for this. Like, I, as far as I know, this is the only place where you get to see the inside of Steelhead Base. Um, quite apart from it being the only place that you see the Ronesh. It's 
quite cool. Obviously it goes very deep. Oh, hello. Who am I dealing with? Ah, here we are. You've decided to wait for me to defeat your friend and then attack me as you came back. Oh, he was merged into the floor there, wasn't he? So in that way, they're a little bit like the um, T-1000s from Terminator 2, aren't they? In that they can shapeshift to this extent. Like in... Um, the thing, the titular thing, uh, as far as I can tell, could only imitate biological beings. It never took the shape of... Um, inanimate objects. Yeah, you can get costume parts for Ron Ash. It's weird, you can make your character look like a Ron Ash but never see them outside the AP otherwise. You can even use Ron Ash liquid puddle travel as a, an actual travel power. I f just I feel like they there may have been an in intention to bring them back for future gateway content. Yeah, probably. And since... they pretty much removed um, any ability to have any new content added to uh, Champions Online by rem by reducing the dev team to one person. Um, we're probably not going to get to see very much new content. Not proper new content. We locked the aliens out, but then they turned the security system on us. We couldn't have left without your help. Thank you, technical issues. Here are the security codes for ac access to the other large vaults. Please stop these aliens. Just thinking about what would happen if they gained control going yeah gained control of what's in the Omega Vault artifact containment vault. Oh, Omega level, not Omega Vault. I was wondering why it would repeat the word vault, but it doesn't. So no wor no worries. Omega level artifact containment vault makes me feel sick with fear, which is obviously what, what the obviously why would they wait that long? I suppose they probably wanted to know who had the codes to get in and presumably steal them. You can't really steal codes from someone if they're dead. So fair enough on that count. Yeah, CO has to borrow a lot of stuff from other games, dev time mostly. Mm -hmm. me or are they doing a lot more damage to the Ronesh than any of the turrets ever did to me? I mean I only fought one turret I suppose. But it was doing single single tur uh, single digit damage to me. Looks like a, a Bigfoot. Well, he's defeat the freed Sasquatch. Giant Sasquatch, okay. A massive Sasquatch. That doesn't tell me anything. Why is he angry? Why was he kept here? He doesn't like lightning, does he? Oh, 
We're very fortunate that his fur hangs down low enough to cover his modesty, aren't we? What was that? Why did he have an apognatious duster? Or a 10% catalyst? Was he supposed to be wearing the Ignatius Duster? They are weak. I like seeing this here. It's a callback to a perk point in Canada where you hear an inhuman roar. Hmm. Okay. Still mystified why he was allowed to have the two objects that we just picked up from him. Unless the duster is supposed to be giant Sasquatch sized and what he was wearing. In which case, why wasn't it on, on the model of the character? Is it just me, or did that thing fire a beam through a Ronesh into the wall? And the Ronesh that it fired through was fine. You're a bit late joining that fight, aren't you? through any of those doors. I thought there'd be guys waiting on the floor though. That's not weird, you'll see later. Do we still head with an accessible instance I've cleaned up? Yeah, it'd be nice if you could actually enter the four station steelhead building when you're actually in Canada. I mean it probably it can't really take that much to change the door on the outside world map. I mean, now that they've got this interior space for Four Station Steelhead, which they wouldn't even need to need use all of, I mean, you wouldn't want to use this um, this section here, but you could have these these rooms, maybe this one, but you wouldn't even need that one, I don't think. You'd probably just need Science Lab Complex and Security Control, or, yeah, Science Lab Complex 1, and you could leave this door closed clean it up a bit so there's not, you know, bleeding bodies all over the floor. Oh no, going the wrong way. Yeah, this guy was standing here. The object here fired, well, uh, maybe it wasn't through him, but it was very close to him if it wasn't. Right through him. Fun part. The energy beam will make sense later. You know, I, I was just I'm just wondering how the energy beam managed to hit the wall but not the Ronesh that was standing between the cube object and the wall. Like why didn't it hurt him when it did damage the wall? The Ronesh, the Ronesh commander. Hmm. I can hit them in a straight line if I do this. Aha! And I critted them! Fantastic! Oh, hello! That's a Ronesh door. Could you stop that, please? It's making it very difficult to fight.
Hey, Captain Patriot. Welcome. What the? Did he just melt into three? Slightly less powerful commanders. I don't think that'll help you. I mean, it's a good idea. But I'm actually quite good at crowds. Oh, is he running off? Ah, I see. He managed to split himself into three, and now he's back. But yes, the shifters, the Ronesh. Could you stop that, please? Transference state. Only has 15 minutes. But when activated, you melt into a puddle, allowing you to move around the surface undetected by your foes. While active, it grants you the equivalent of 30 plus run speed. So basically, it's a tunneling travel power. That's probably the ooze tunneling travel power, isn't it? Um, no, not train. All powers. Oops. So it's probably ooze tunneling. Although it looks like, well, this looks like a Ronesh helmet. So it could be either ooze tunneling, metallic ooze tunneling, or inky ooze tunneling. None of which I have because they're only available on the Question Night store. I thought I had scarab tunneling. Oh yes, I do. I just um, don't have it on this character. Sue the Ronesh somehow. They're not actually that expensive, given that it's an account unlock. Hmm, cool. Well. I don't typically use tunneling as a travel power. I prefer flight because it's more convenient so that you can like get over obstacles. I do think it's a cool travel power and it's not something that you see in either uh, City of Heroes or DCUO. Um, so it's really cool that it exists, but um, I, I don't find it terribly useful for my own gameplay like my own preferred style of play. A long buried Ronesh spacecraft that we hadn't managed to find even though it's right next to um, Force Station Steelhead. appropriate name for... Oh, it looks like it's been bent. It's appropriate name for this, um... <laughs> this issue of... This... Or were they weaker than previous ones? Am I supposed to be defeated here? So I can be put in a, a, a cell? I feel like I am. 
Yes, I'm supposed to be captured. The walk animation stopped working just as he uh, left the room. So he, he got as far as here and then he started to drift forwards out of the room. You'd think a geological survey team would have noticed a cavern this size. Yeah, you'd think so. I mean, I suppose it's mostly made of ice, so maybe geological survey technology can't see through ice quite the same way it can see through rock. But then maybe ice should be easier to see through than rock? I don't know. I don't know anything about using geological survey devices. They're super weak. These Ronesh just woke up out of stasis. They're the crew of the ship and have been frozen for decades. Huh. Always thought they were reanimated ones. Hence the weakness. It is a little galling that um, your character absolutely has to get caught like that. I mean technical issues shouldn't be that easy to subdue given the given her build also very convenient that they're speaking english even if it is Sort of like this, so you can't really understand what they're saying. If you look at their names, it says Revived Ronesh. Not really sure what sort of revival, I guess. Hmm. Oh yeah, it does. Revived Vanguard. It'd be cool if you get uh, an attack power that looked like that, because it's like a beam that kind of splashes off you. That looked really cool. So what am I supposed to be doing? Disable the hyperspace engine. Yeah, that'd probably, probably be a good idea, wouldn't it? I appear to be moving rapidly away from Earth, which is a little awkward. I mean, technical issues can survive in hard vacuum. Um, she can leave her moon base and walk about on, well, float about on the moon's surface without any um, protective devices or technology. But actually just being a very long way away from Earth is inconvenient. How are they disguising this themselves as part of a transparent um, bit of floor? be cool if you could make um, a Ronesh your nemesis or one of your nemeses like it'd be cool if you could get um, <coughs> enemy attack powers available for um, nemesis um, power sets I 
think probably the closest you could get for to Ronesh would be um, Supernatural Infernal. Ronesh were cryogenically suspended when the ship crashed. Ha, if you think that's a silly story element, try playing Nemcon. You start the mission in a jail cell in a fortress on the moon. I don't think the story actually explains how you got there. Hmm, never thought of that before, but they actually do appear out of the force field. I think they use, think they use Infernal Supernatural. Not quite. Like, the pull effect is... I mean, they, they have... Uh, the effect of the power that, when it hits you, is basically um, supernatural, uh, infernal supernatural, but the animation effects aren't the same, um, which means actually genuinely having a Ronesh isn't really possible. Uh, you can only get something that looks like a Ronesh, sort of, as long as you've got costume parts. And I've got some costume parts for Ronesh, but not all of them. I don't have the hand weapon stuff. Uh, or the chest or hip armor appearances. So I could probably get close. Um, but they wouldn't have... They wouldn't, like, animate the same way. And they, their attacks wouldn't look the same. Which is kind of a shame. I mean, you've got Ronesh in the game. Why not let people choose them as their nemesis. Not the moon, you are diverted by a teleport to a dimensional prison. If I recall correctly, it's explained. I always thought they intercepted the transport beam in Nemcon. Hmm, I feel like doing research now. So what's Nemcon? My immediate assumption is that it's Nemesis Convention. Which can't be right. Oh, no, no, Nemesis Confrontation. Ah. I see Nemcon has a one-liner about how you beamed to the wrong place. You still don't even see it happen. Right. Ooh, cutscene. That's a Lemurian. We can bury anything. Cyber Lord again. We can be anyone. Jerry Rick. You have no concept of the number of places we have infiltrated for our patron. Just a sure. Is it going to be Defender Soon next? We'll oh, no, not quite. A rightful place in this universe. We will overthrow our Malvin overlords. We don't like the Malvins either. If you weren't knobheads about it, we'd help you. If you asked. Original intent was that everyone uses the ADIS from Unity, which is intercepted. You are going to the moon base because of some sort of weird space vessel. Look carefully at what he turns into. Some of them you see nowhere else. The only one that I didn't recognize was the first one, and if he's capable of shape-shifting into humans who can speak uh, in such a way that you can't tell that they're Ronesh. Why can't he shapeshift a part of himself, like his mouth and voice box, so that he sounds intelligible when he's threatening you? I do think it's cool that they've, like, changed the lighting effect here so that my red powers look kind of orangey-yellow. Lightning bolt! That didn't do very much at all to him, did it? He's got a lot of health.
Maybe he can and just doesn't want to. Yeah, fair enough. Malvin technology is among the most advanced in the galaxy. But still, we could be common allies against a... Uh, allies against a common foe, I mean. Why not ask us for help? We're clearly more capable than they initially assumed us to be. Because then... Well, I'm not quite beating... I can't say that I'm beating the tar out of him now. That's, um... Is that Simon? He's in, um... Psy Team Colours and Costume. It's probably not Simon, is it? I think Simon's bold. But in this form, I suppose the Ronesh is supposed to be a bit like, um... Completely blanked on the name. Uh, Scroll from, um... Oh, it is Simon. Okay, I thought it might be. Scroll from um, Marvel, in that they can shapeshift like this and um, take on, uh, infiltrate and take on different forms and even take on powers. Oof. That's a Gadroon. still in hyperspace. Oh. Earth would not stand a chance under normal circumstances. Yes, they have a scroll equivalent. Worse than the scroll. Scrolls you can negotiate with and live with at least some of the time. Forget the details. Uh, that's a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot. Um, it's a smaller version, I think it's the smaller version of uh, the giant Sasquatch that we fought earlier, actually. Um, I suppose the difference between the Ronesh and the Skrull is, aside from being able to negotiate with the Skrull and live alongside them, Skrull I don't think are capable of imitating inanimate objects or like merging with the floor as the Ronesh are. Yeah, I know this is a window. That's I, I figured this was like the the front window, and that we were like these lines were hyperspace traveling past us, and that's why I was thinking, hadn't we hadn't we set uh, disabled the hyperspace engine? Shouldn't we have dropped from hyperspace? Why is there a s still animations going past the screen like this? Is draining power from the power cube. That's awkward. Ooh, he's got a Cthulhu face there. Good thing technical issues isn't a Japanese schoolgirl, eh? Just a normal moving tentacle here. Move along! <laughs> uh, scroll can imitate inanimate objects, they just can't merge with them. Is there any other uh, occasions where you get to look outside of a hyperspace, uh, outside of a vehicle whilst it's in hyperspace? Or is this it? Initially, we were led to believe it was Mechanon. But that doesn't make much sense. Remember how I said the energy theme would make sense? I mean, I knew that it would show up. Or, well, no, I didn't remember that this part. I kind of recalled a bit that... Oh, this, um, this face, like the tentacles, tentacly bit face bits, and the shoulder parts, 
and the wrist parts he's got here, those are uh, available as a um, vine costume piece. Uh, has he got a chest piece? Yes, he has. Plus the energy cube. Energy from the cube. The, the, the energy from the cube uses can be metabolized by Ronesh. Hmm, clearly. Inconvenient for me. Who's being did more damage to who? I'm betting my being did more damage to him. A lot of health, isn't it? It's not going down very quickly at all. Come on. I mean, I don't have anywhere to be. You're not ma making me late, but this is still irritating. I'm sure I've got other villains I could be de defeating. They're just taking up time in my schedule. Careful if you mess up, you won't get your boss loot. It's happened to me more than once. Pretty sure this fight was balanced under the assumption there'd be at least two players. How do I mess up and not get loot? Do I have to have destroyed the tentacles first or something? I suppose there is only one. Let's beat up the tentacle. Ah, he drops on top of a story interact. Ah, yes. That must be irritating. The Eve option is on top of the loop collect. Hmm. Yeah, it's annoying when that happens. It's more annoying if you're in a control effect whilst you're also in an area that can be interacted with, or like left, so that when you're hammering on the, on the, the F key to... Um, leave the control effect if you go slight if you do it for slightly too long aha uh -huh, yes you can go far enough away from the object that you can take the items that he's dropped artifact shard unleashes the power of the Roronesh artifact in creating a rift in space through which power is released quickly, damaging and debuffing enemy nearby foes. So this is basically the um, dimension rift power. He's left bits of himself behind. Not allowed through the front. Not allowed at the controls. Or I'll be teleported back to the entrance corridor. Okay. The artifact rests on the ground, apparently inert. It may now be useless or it may just need to be recharged. In any case, it belongs back in the vaulted steelhead. With the Ronesh leader and his forces defeated, the ancient ship can be piloted back to Earth. There's a steelhead. discovered it was the alien ship that knocked out communications. 
The Star Guardians contacted us while you were in space. They shot down the first row in his ship, and nearly shot you down, too. We knew you could control the situation. And we found one of the aliens. We're keeping it here for now. For centuries, the Rowanish had been slaves of the Malvan Empire. With someone powerful behind them, they could be big trouble. Our Rowanish captive isn't talking, but Ironclad has run up against them before and gave us some useful intel. <laughs> It isn't saying anything valuable. Well, you know they're out there, and they've been to work. We'll be on guard against their kind from now on. The end of that adventure pack, yep. Like the Harmon Lab alert, the spawn point is on top of the door to leave the alert. It actually gives you press F to leave the alert button before the alert even starts. Very few mention of Star Guard in game. Uh, not the end of the game, no, the end of that uh, adventure pack. So um, I'll be able to do other adventure packs. Oops. But there isn't really an end to this game. Yep, Christmas tree. It's the Christmas event. I'm glad to hear you were able to help Justice Shah. He's already sent out a briefing on the Ronesh. And what was that the only time that we hear the, the word Ronesh spoken aloud? And what happened in Steelhead? The world is a safer place with heroes like you. Technical issues. Resistance. I don't think I want to do resistance next. I might do Demon Flame. What's Aftershock? Snake Charmer, Home is Revisited. I don't know that I've done any of these. Is Snake Charmer the Serpent Lantern one? Yes it is. It's talk to Major Kwame. That's a lot of emojis. I don't think I want to do Serpent Lantern either. Not just yet. It's quite a long one. Uh, those are alerts. That's a lair. Oh yeah, she's... Um, no. Where's Death Rattle? Oh right, yes, no. I remember what Death Rattle is. I want to do all of that all at once, so I would need to do them individually between streams so that I can do them all back to back. Um, I haven't started Death Rattle, uh, so I won't be able to do it all together as I would like. So um, I think I'm gonna do Demon Flame I quite like that one. Oh yeah, and let's turn the uh, music off. I think you start Demon Flame here, don't you? I have to find out. Demon Flame, yes, there we go. I've just received reports from my field agents that Demon has kidnapped some citizens to use in their ritual magic. Unfortunately, we have a good idea... Oh, fortunately, we have a good idea where they've been taken. Where they've taken them. Back to their Demon Haim in Westside. I've contacted Witchcraft as well. She believes this may be part of a larger ritual involving Demon Haims across the country or even worldwide. I'll contact you once we have a better idea of what Demon's up to. 
For now, technical issues, I need you to save some lives. Well, I can do that. Off we go. Uh, it might be fairly long, yeah. Uh, so I won't be able to finish it today, certainly, because I'm going until 11 and we're at half 10. Um, but can you join an adventure pack after it's been started? I mean, I'm happy, happy to have you along, but you might be... Well, no, you wouldn't necessarily be committing yourself to something um, on Monday as well. Oh, no, other one. Hmm. Here? Yes, here. Okay. So I think, because I'm level 40, these guys count as one group, I think. So if I attack one, the others won't... Oh no, they will. Okay. That's a surprise. Maybe they have to be even lower level than that. So I think I did that up here somewhere. What are these guys? Seven. And the others... Maybe it's just that this group is bugged. Not that they don't want anything to do with me and won't attack. Oh well. Um, as long as your DPS can heal themselves okay, probably the DPS. I don't know that I'll need a healer. I mean, Demon Flame is supposed to be soloable, so it shouldn't be necessary that we'd need a healer. Certainly, Technical Issues is perfectly capable of keeping herself up, as long as she doesn't get absolutely bodied, like by Valerian Scarlet, which, as far as I know, doesn't happen unless they've changed um, Demon Flame. So if you've got a character that hasn't done Demon Flame yet, then by all means... I know those guys were level 7, it's just... Um, I wanted to demonstrate that if you attack one in a group, the others will ignore you. But now I've realised that maybe it's just that the that specific group at the top of that um, like in concrete embankment might be bugged. Even purple gang mooks are smart enough to not attack someone who can be who can one shot them with an AOE. Yeah, well, it's just there was some down here outside that were level eight who I attacked one and the others attacked me and then the ones up the top they were level seven and I attacked one and they ignored me so Raven Force when you've picked the character you want to play alongside me on um, just message me in the game and I'll uh, or would it work with you inviting me to a team or would I need to invite you so that you can come along on this So it might just be that the team of, or the, the group of mobs of um, Purple Gang up the top um, outside on top of the ridge are bugged and they won't attack even if you, like maybe they don't consider them themselves a part of a, a group of mobs or maybe the, dif the level difference needs to be more than 23. Or 33, rather. For them to ignore you because you're too scary. I mean, maybe I need to find some level 5 or 6 
mobs somewhere to test it out on. places in the game where enemy groups aren't really groups. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I haven't encountered them that many times. Mostly what happens is a group is really, really spread out so that you can't tell quite who will come running when you start attacking uh, dudes who appear to be on their own at first blush. I don't know that these guys are so spread out. I'd like them to be closer together so I can hit them more easily with my um, AoE. Come on, bunch up. Bottleneck, for my convenience. There we go, that's more like it. Demon has captured innocent civilians and is using them to power a summoning ritual. Break up the ritual and get those civilians out of here. Righto. Check kidnapped civilian. You saved me. I did. orbs are here for? I mean, if they're here for light, which they appear to be, why would they need candles? And why would they need candles in the first place, even if these orbs aren't for light, because they shed enough light that the candles are basically useless? Maybe the candles form a part of the ritual? Maybe they just want them for ambience. Maybe a part of the ritual is hurting the victims with hot candle wax. Giant crystal ball. Demon are wizards after all. Yeah, could be. How did these get in here? This room doesn't have any rolling doors. Oh no, yes it does. But still... How, how did these shipping crates and these tall boxes get into this room? There's no way they could fit. For one thing, the shipping crate's dimensions are larger than this rolling door, and even if they weren't, no ceiling hatches. Even if the dimensions were capable of fitting through this door, there is still a beam in the way! Yeah, but in Stargate, when you find out that the way that they got the gate in that far underground... When you actually get a look at the ceiling, you can see that there's a hatch in there that can move aside. But in this 
room. This weird H-shaped room. There aren't any. Hatches in the ceiling. Maybe the wizards can use magic to teleport stuff. Well, yeah, but why would they need these crates? Maybe... Maybe shipping uh, companies in this universe have access, some of them, some of the most rich and affluent um, shipping companies have access to dimensional technology, so they've got like pocket dimensions for shipping, in which case all you need to do is carry the pocket, oh there's another door here, and it isn't blocked off by a, uh, a support column, but even still, the dimensions of this crate are not such that they could fit through here. Hacking magic, yeah. Technical issues, this is witchcraft, contacting you using a spell of clairvoyance. Why? Can't she appear in the form of an astral proje projection? We've seen her do it before. I see that you have saved the people demon kidnapped. Well done, but it seems this was not a single demon haim acting alone. Demon okay. was using the demon was using these people and others like them in a ritual to open a major gate to the Clefothic realm here in Millennium City. I'm afraid they have already succeeded. In fact, the gate is in the basement of the Magic Learner bo Lantern books Bookstore, across the street from the Champion's Building. How did they get in there? We shut down a Clefothic portal two days ago, on Wednesday. And they ha uh, Demon have their own Magic Bookstore, the, the, the Book of the Beast or something? The beast store? It had beast in the name. Why did they need to get into the Magic Lantern bookstore to open their portal when they have a perfectly acceptable magic bookstore of their own? This is, a, this is a very bold move for Demon, and I suspect their leader, Luther Black, is involved. I shall try to connect, contain the Clefothic energies at the Magic Lantern, lest they contaminate the entire city. Hurry here and meet me inside. Um, oh yes, I can just leave like this, can't I? <clears throat> Great Beast, yes, that's the one. Great Beast Bookstore. Should I not just share my mission with you? Already has Operation Demon Flame. Do you not need to have done this one to be able to join me in the next part? Can you drop it and have me share my one with you? didn't allow it. Hmm. That's awkward. Cool costume, by the way. How are you headcanoning this creature as a superhero? Come closer. We need to touch your clothes, the sewn ones. Name unknown. Occupation Army of attack mannequins created by Madame Couture. Oops. Fell into a tree. That's awkward. Yes, I figured they were probably villains. <laughs> oh, 
Why is Demon doing this? The last time Demon opened the Edom, the Edom Gate to the Clefothic realm, to the Clefothic, was the Demon Flame incident of 1986. Demon's leader, Luther Black, spent nearly 12 hours trying to draw the power of an avatar of the Kings of Edom. And when the Justice Squadron interrupted his ritual and closed the gate, the backlash destroyed his body, leaving him an invalid. I am sure he is attempting to harness the same power again, but I can no longer sense his aura. I believe he has crossed over into the Clefothic realm to master the dark energies he seeks without interference. To immerse himself in the Clefothic realm is to imperil his sanity and his very soul, but I am sure that Black does not care. So surely us going in also... Um, how did I earn that? sure us going in also imperils our bodies and sanities. Demon's ritual has opened a gate to the nightmarish Clefothic realm in the cellar of this building. Your heroic efforts to save their victims have partially disrupted the gate, but the taint of the Clefothic is already seeping into our world. We must close the gate. I have sealed the cellar with a mystic wall, but this is only a temporary solution. Stand in the circle beh behind me. Oh right, yes, it is behind her and dispel it. Then we must go to the portal itself and reverse it. Beware, the Clefothic is home to horrors both great and small. As you can see, some of the some of them have made their way through already. Major Baudreau and her troops will make sure nothing gets past us to the outside world. Okie dokie. Dispel the magic barrier. You'll find coming to Earth will give you a shocking bad time. Oh, no more under here. They've just smashed everything. Because they're vandals. horrors and with no respect well these aren't quite the same as the Trey Kings that we fought they're similar oh I should probably also check the uh Oh no, these are... we've already seen info of, um... Demon cultists. It's the Clefothic dudes that we haven't seen. Throughout the shining darkness dwell the terrible minions of the Kings of Edom, known only in human speech as the Clefothic Horrors. Foul demons spawned from chaos itself. These creatures exist to kill maim and destroy in the name of their inhuman masters. Witchcraft gets hurt very easily during this. It's what contributes to my opinion that she's not terribly useful. Cover me while I reverse the portal. What would you like me to cover you in? I didn't bring any blankets with me. We should wait for the Violet and the Here's my chat still connected. Come on. Okay. Maybe now I'll be able to see messages from people. It stayed connected for a while, so I thought maybe it was just fine, but. Maybe it disconnected and just didn't tell me. As usual, we have stopped the immediate threat and reversed the dark energies coming from the portal, but our work is not yet done. Yuluther Black has entered the Clefothic realm. If he is not stopped, I fear he will return with full mastery of the power of Shana Gorak. We must stop him. Use the portal to journey to the Clefothic realm. I will join you there, and together we will foil his plans. Now, 
Witchcraft is canonically more of a talented amateur than an expert in magic. <laughs> Am I not correct in thinking that um, Luther Black would still would fail where, whether we were here or not? On the other side. We'll go first. You know the drill. Move out. Phase through my character there. Oh, now you're telling me that. See you on the other side. Reconnecting to chat. Come on. Am I not right in thinking that, regardless of our attention, um, the kings of Edom will still reject um, Luther Black and basically eat his soul. I don't know how much of a difference we actually make. Could you please connect to the Wi-Fi, you ridiculous thing? I mean, it's not even the tablet's fault, it's the room somehow shielded against Wi-Fi for some fucking reason. Maybe I need to put a Wi-Fi antenna in the room. Maybe that would solve the issue. Welcome to the Clefothic realm, technical issues. An entire dimension of madness, corruption and decay. We must be about our business quickly, or the corrupting influence of this realm may overwhelm us. What are the kings of Edom? The kings have many names and many faces. They are ancient and almost elemental evil. They are beyond the reach of any mortal magic. For black it to obtain to bind them or to siphon their energy would be impossible. Likewise, their minds are alien and unknowable, and there can be no hope of reasoning or bargaining with them. Black desires to become one of them, to stand on equal footing with the devourers of worlds. I think he is quite insane, but he may yet destroy our world before he destroys himself. Unless these turrets are flat packed somehow, I don't know how they managed to get this set up so fast. It probably is flat packed somehow. What is Luther Black doing here? Long ago, the kings of Edom had a mighty servant on Earth, Sharana Gorak, the Destroyer. During the Demon Flame incident in 1986, Luther Black stole Sharana Gorak's power, but his ritual was interrupted and he did, does not fully control that power. There is not. This is not a natural place. Luther Black must have been shaping this place for years. Look, there are five lesser gates here, one for each king. This entire plane is a mystic circle, and Luther Black is using it in a ritual to harness his clefothic powers. Technical issues. We must not let him succeed. Yes, clearly. Avatars of the Kings. Luther Black's ritual is meant to control his clefothic powers. Powers that were originally given to Shana Gorak by the kings of Edom. Black's magic can't affect the kings directly, but he has anchored his magic circle by binding an avatar of each king, a lesser clefothic creature that embodies the king's essence. Disrupt an avatar's binding and it will weaken Black's magic circle, as well as allowing the demon key I summoned to attune to the king's essence. Except we haven't summoned a demon key yet. The gates to Luther Black's citadel are closed to us and can only be opened by clefothic energies. For either of us to hold such energies within ourselves would corrupt us, turning us into abominations like the ones that roam this plane. Instead, I shall create a powerful elemental of chaos, 
a demon to store enough clefothic energy to, to unlock Black's sealed power. Wouldn't it be awkward if we were playing as a clefothic demon and therefore didn't care about absorbing uh, clefothic power? The ritual is dangerous and the summoned demon may react aggressively, so I ask you to ass ask that you assist. What must be done? I shall create a guide and key for you. It will hold a sliver of power from the kings of Edom, and with it you can enter Black Citadel. Beware, I will be bound with sorcery. It, it will be bound with sorcery, but its nature is chaos. Like the kings of Edom, it will ha have neither loyalty nor conscience. Let's begin the ritual. Join me in the ritual. Essence of chaos by Loki, by Kronos, by Set. Heed my call and serve our need. Kronos wasn't a it's god of chaos, was he? This one has a strong will. He was god of time. And Do not set mark me, woman. It is your fumble fingered sorcery that put me in such a sorry state. Set was kind I of a god of chaos, I suppose. Summon another. We'll have to feed this one. It might interest you to know that my current state is merely temporary. As, su as that witch who bound me said, an infusion of pure chaos energy will restore me to full strength. However, I regret to say that until this happens, I must rely on you to guarantee my safe passage. In this form, in this place, I cannot be destroyed, but I can be temporarily dispelled. Should the local inhabitants prove hostile, and I am disassociated, I will reform back here at this point. Not by choice, I might add. Let's get this over with. He can be, but um, the clefothic beings that appear aren't too difficult to deal with. Certainly with um, AoE effects. He's got plenty of health. It's really disconcerting that your character has changed form into a sort of middle-aged man with thinning hair. I think we'll do this bit My powers grow. and help him reform uh, and then once there's a, a point of not very much happening we'll uh, stop the stream because it's slightly past 11 now. I did start a bit late, so I'm fine with finishing it a little bit late, but I don't intend to go super long. And you have the inky um, tunneling travel power as well. Now oh, he's going off over here. Is the same. And these guys are subtly different to the um, Clefothic affected guys in exhilarating. the Trey Kings. Uh, the Trey Kings don't have like twisty bits on their hands or, or on their feet or shoulders.
that ability to pull people into one place is really useful. If only control were a viable archetype in this game. <sighs> Now that both the Demon Key and I have regained our strength, it is time to... I am to whole again. You will bow before me. You done talking? It is time... It is time ruin Luther Black's scheme. No full stop. Cool. We He has trapped the avatars of the kings of Edom and is drawing power from them. We do not dare confront him while he can tap their power. Before we can do, we can go after Black himself. We must pen we must penetrate the power, the towers, blah, blah, of the kings and free the avatars from their magical prisons. Penetrate the other side of the building. Gather the demon key and meet me at the patrol of the portal to the heart in man's dement dementia. Okay. My power has been restored, and you shall soon see it demonstrated. Mark my words. Once I am free of your witch's spell, I shall break your bones and suck the marrow from them. Go to the portal. Yes. To the tower. Whatever will end this torment. Go to the tower. Where is the... Why can I not go to the tower? should be able to teleport straight to the tower. <sighs> okay, um, I'll fly over and then that will be the end of today's stream, I think. We'll have a look at this Clefathic realm that has been shaped by Luther Black. Quite a spooky, ugly place, isn't it? Oops. There we go. Uh, thanks for watching the stream, everyone. Uh, apologies for not being able to respond properly to uh, chat for a while at the end there. Oh, I finally got access to the chat again. Well, that's the end of today's stream. I'll be back on Monday at 8 p.m. GMT for roughly three hours. Uh, we'll be continuing with this. Um, hopefully we'll be able to manage um, dealing with Luther Black within the time frame of the stream. We might not be able to. It's quite a long adventure pack. Um, but we'll see most of it if we don't manage to fi finish it all. Uh, so good night, everybody.